Everybody's hungry. I'm here with my co-host. I'm working from behind the camera on hey, this where, one. Where are you? Just yeah, behind the mic. Behind the mic. Um, but I'm here with my co-host, Curtis Taylor of Hophead Said, and we're bringing you Pints and Pairings from the Road. We're at Figaro Mountain in Santa Barbara, and we're here with Brewmaster AJ. Just finished off a little flight, and we've got a couple of pints that have gone down nicely, so we want to talk a little bit about this operation, AJ, um, what it's like to be the Brewmaster for Figaro Mountain, and your perspective on some of the beers. Cool. Well, we... We've had black, uh, black bread, the Dunkel, the Frozen Goat, and the Lizard, which was a uh, big IPA as well. Um, this is so great because I'm, I'm used to first the, your, your usual setup, um, of which I think my favorite is probably Paradise Rose Pilsner. I love that. Thing. I just that's my favorite uh, go-to beer for for uh, Figaro Mountain. But to be able to taste all these specialty batches. That is, in itself, probably the most important reason, from, from my point of view anyway, to get in here, just because you're not going to find these anywhere else. And so we were talking just a little bit of, uh, you got four brewers that come in and they spend two months in this location brewing. So tell, kind of lead us through how, how they move into this and then what they do after, while they, what they do while they're here. Sure. So we built this pub as an extension of our, our main facility. This is a much smaller brewing system. Obviously, we're not doing any sort of outside distribution from here. Like you said, this beer is all for, for sale and just in the tap rooms here in Gilton. Um, and so we came down, we put the equipment in, um, we all the brewery, and then I, I realized you know, it would be a lot of fun to rotate the rest of our brew staff down here also just to kind of keep an interest. I mean, we all love brewing. and we, you know. You know, even if we're brewing hoppy poppy every day, we're still brewing, and it's still fun. But it's even more fun to uh, to brew some new stuff and and to actually brew their own recipes. So like the, the beer that you had there, the frozen goat, that's um, Mike Hastings, our uh, Middleton Head Brewers uh, recipe for a bicycle. Um, and seven point six percent too. Yeah, it doesn't taste like it. No, he did a good job with that. So, so um, you know, we have. Even on the rotation, there's still a lot of stuff that we have to brew. I mean, we've got a lot of like regular specialties. The lizards went off as many viral and, and is in, in high demand. Our uh, pulse, the whole of East Wand, we always keep around. The Irish Stout, we have to keep around all the time. So there's a little bit of repeat brewing, but um, you know, there's there's still a lot of opportunity for new stuff also. So. We were talking a little bit ago about the over the deck and the just the real forward hot presence and kind of the bitter spiciness that comes out of that. When we look across the flight and some of the beers that we've tasted, how do you feel they compare to someone at home who just wants to have it with a good meal? Is it? Are, do you think you have very food-friendly beers? Oh, absolutely. Um, so Figueroa's whole philosophy about beers is uh, about being uh, subtle and nuanced. You know, there's a lot of shock value beers, uh, and we have a lot of like San Diego influence on the Central Coast. It seems like you know people that like these big, early IPAs that are literally palate wreckers, not to. They call out uh, green flash, <laughs> you know, things that are just like destructive. And so, you know, like Curtis was saying, the Paradise Road Pilsner is kind of the opposite of that. That's a beer that you appreciate because it is subtle. I mean, it's Pilsner malt and Noble Hops. It's the most basic, simple beer. Uh, but what makes it good or bad is all of the uh, behind the scenes stuff, all the process and the, the precision and that kind of thing. So, um, all of our beers are about subtlety and nuance, um, even the shocking ones. That's why I think Lizard's not as popular is because it's not. A super aggressive beer, even though it is high alcohol content and soup and very hoppy. And I, was, I mean, looking at the, the the board here, and I didn't realize that that was a 9.2% IPA. Well, I mean, stand up, you'll, you'll realize. <laughs> as soon as no, I'm going to stay sitting for just a little bit, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. Do they do your brewers? Do they have full? Uh, I don't know. What, you just turn them loose when they come in here. I mean, you're saying that you've got a couple of these that you that they've got to the, they have to brew. But you know, like Mike's frozen goat, and his there was another one in here. This this uh, Dunkel Weizen, maybe. You know, they come to you and they say, "Hey, I really Jones and for this beer." Yeah. Like, well, I mean, essentially yes. And, uh, you know, we we make sure that it's a, a beer that people are going to be open to. I mean, if we make crawfish style, I don't know. If I know. <laughs> uh, but but really, I they, they just they decide what they want to make. Like Mike. Came to me and said, I really want to make a bison box, and I said, Great, go do it. And then I'm a, you know, uh, some of our brewers are more or less experienced, um, so I'm always available to help them crunch numbers and, mm -hmm. and calculate, and make sure that they're going to come out with the right color and the right alcohol percentage and all that kind of stuff. But really, it's just whatever they want to do for their recipes. Mm -hmm. For the, the other stuff, there's definitely a big 
standard operating procedure that we all have in um, the interest of consistency. Excellent. I think with the, uh, the skill and the complexity we've seen with some of these beers and the, brew the brewers that are really putting them out, Hopefully a few of these will end up on the regular menu, and you'll see them come into your local yeah. establishments under the Figaro, Mount, Figaro yeah, Mountain as brand. As you guys keep drinking it, we'll keep making it. That's kind of how it works. If you've got a strong seller like the Irish Town and the Lizard's Mouth, then you know, we're basically forced to make it. You know? Sure. <laughs> because that's what we do. We make the beer that people want to drink. We're not trying to shove something down anybody's throat, figuratively speaking. Um, you know, it's just we, we make beer that we like, and we make beer that other people like. and. I, mean, they I, think have it. I think that's great because I've, I've been to a few places where there's no, everything is a one-off and every once in a while I come across a beer that I think is really great and I would, I, I appreciate what they're trying to do but then again from the consumer's oh, yeah. side of it, I want to, if I go to your place, I want to be able to drink that whatever it was. So, so. Well, we weren't disappointed today and AJ, we appreciate your time. We'll definitely be looking for some of these beers to come into the mainstream and we'll be back for another tasting near future. Right, and if you don't see them in the mainstream, get down here. Um, address real quick. 137 in a cafe. And it's the Funk Zone uh, here in Santa Barbara. And we're two, three blocks from the beach, somewhere in there. And so, yeah, get yourself a beer, enjoy the great weather, and follow these guys at Big Mountain, F-I-G-M-T-N Brew. Big Mountain Brew. We appreciate your time. It's been a great experience. Thanks, AJ.